Hello, everyone. Um, I welcome you all to today's discussion. And today we are going to look at um, the effect of price on a normal good. Um, but we're going to decompose the total effect into the substitution and income effects. In our previous discussion, um, we used the Slavsky equation uh, to decompose the effect of a price change on commodity into the substitution and income effect. And the Slavsky is more of um, algebra or mathematics. So in this session, um, I'm going to, for the purposes of uh, those in the undergraduate studies, I'm going to use the indifference curve to decompose the effect of price into the substitution and the income effect. I know you all remember your indifference curve. Uh, indifference curve just uh, is a curve that represents the combination of uh, two commodities that gives you the same utility, right? So I'll first start off by drawing my diagram. So this is my budget constraint. This is my budget constraint. So I'll call this part X1 and then this part X2. Now let's see, this is my optima. This is my optima X1. And then my optima X2, great. Now suppose there is a four in price one. Suppose there's a four in price one. When price one falls, uh, what happens to the budget constraint? Um, it is going to spin on its others, right? So the X2 part, which is this side, becomes constant. However, that of S1 um, moves. So I'm going to have something like this. Is okay because the price of S1 has sort fallen. So once the price of S1 has fallen, now this is the optimal uh, or optimal choice in the case of um, when nothing has happened to the price. So at that point, that is where MRS, MRS of X1, X2 is equal to price ratios, right? P1, P2, great. Now let's see, because as a result of the fall in price, we've now come to this point, that the indifference curve here, so I'll call this indifference curve zero, and this is indifference curve one, great. Now as a result of the fall in price, consumption for X1 has moved up to this point, right? Great, up to this one, so I'll call this one, X1, new prime, let me call this one zero, right? Great, so um, we're trying to decompose this into, so this represents the total effect of price, change in price one on X1, right? So what I'm going to do is just to decompose this effect into two, the substitution and income effect. So the idea in this uh, section is to ask yourself, um, now prior to, the, uh, prior to the fall in price, this is what we were consuming, right? Now because that is our quarter 5.8, great. And let me call this part point B, right? Now, because there is a fall in price, right? Our real income has increased. And as a result, we are consuming more of X run, right? So the idea that we have ourselves here is that um, what is the amount of money that we have to deduct from this person's income? Because there, there's a, a, an increase in real income, right? In order to ensure that the person consumes, uh, the persons obtain the same utility before, that is before when there was a change in price, right? So let's say when there was a change in price, you were consuming a certain amount of uh, a certain uh, amount of S1 and X2 so that was giving a certain utility. Now there is a change in price. Price has fallen, and because of that, your real income has increased, which implies you can buy more, right? So the point is, we do not expect you to, we don't want you to buy more, right? We want you to maintain the same utility, right? But not the optimal S1, S2, right? So what we are saying that what is the amount of money that we have to deduct from this person, right? That is what we call the compensated, but in this case, that involves your income has increased. In order to ensure that this person will maintain the same utility as before the change in price, right? So in this, so that means you are going to deduct money from uh, the person's account. In deducting the money, it means the I in defense, uh, the budget constraint, curve, which is this one, this one here, is going to shift right leftwards until it gets to the point where it has the same uh, utility as that of A, right? So it's going to shift. So it will shift. So let's say there's going to be a price shift. It will shift, right? Shift, shift. Yeah, great. So this is going to be a shift. So now the shift is now meeting the indifference case zero at this point, right? Which is this point. So and I'm going to have this. Great. 
So let's say it passes through this. That's the shift part, right? Meeting the end at this point, right? So I'll call this point C, right? Great. What it means is that so the different so from to here is what we call the substitution effect. And the difference between C and B is what we call the income effect, right? So I'm going to explain the income effect. Good, so this is what it means. And from here, from this point to this point, is what we call the total effect, is okay. So this is what it means. Um, as a result of the fall in price, price of commodity one, right? It makes a, 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 it makes commodity one or quite cheaper relative to a, a substitute, right? Now, because it is now cheaper, um, a lot of people are now going to substitute uh, the community that is now expensive for which one then the uh, x1 which is now cheaper and the substitution that is why the substitution effect is causing x1 to increase from this point up to this point as well as substitution effects right now because this uh, x1 is also a normal commodity now when there's a foreign price the real income also will increase that means the person is going to buy more of s1 so the real income also reinforces the person to buy more of what s1 that is causing it to move, move from this point up to this point right so the substitution effect causes, the, as a result of the foreign price, causes X1 to move up to this point. And the income effects reinforce it to move from this point up to this point. It's okay. So that is what, so that is what we call um, this substitution effect, this section, A to C, A to C is equal to the substitution effect, A to C. And that of um, C to B is called the income effect, right? Okay, so thank you. In, in my next video, I'm going to look at the case of an inferior good.